Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to solve problem 39 of chapter 6. Determine the force in members CD, CF, and CG. And state if these members are in tension or compression. So looking at the members that we want to find the forces for, uh, it seems that we need to make a section cuts that cuts all the members. So if we make such a section cut, that's true that it exposes all the members that we are interested in, but then we are ending up with four members and we cannot find four unknowns because we only have three equilibrium equations in uh, 2D, two equilibrium for forces and then one moment equilibrium equation. So we need to make a different section cut that only gives us three unknowns. That's the section cut that we are gonna perform here. But after making a section cut, we need to do a joint analysis as well. So we are gonna use method of section and method of joints together to solve this problem. So that would be our section cut. After the section cut, we have to decide whether we are going to do analysis on the right side or on the left side. So looking at the problem, it's obvious that we have less number of forces on the right segment. So I'm going to draw the free body diagram for the right segment. So here you can see the free body diagram on the right segment. I have exposed the three members, so I have the three unknown forces. FDC is unknown. F, FC is unknown and F, FG is my three unknowns. I can write three equilibrium equation to find the unknown. But first I need to find the reaction force EY. So I need to go back to my truss and find the reaction forces. I have two reaction forces, one here EY and one AY and technically we have AX but because we don't have any forces in x direction therefore ax would be zero because i want to find ey so i'm going to write a moment equation about point a that way i get rid of ay one of the unknowns and then i will have only uh, ey as unknown so if, if i write a moment equation about point a force for kilonewton is creating a negative moment, the other force is also creating a negative moment, 5 kilonewton, 3 kilonewton, all creating a negative moment except EY that is creating a positive moment. So I write negative 4, moment arm is 5, negative 4 again, moment arm is 10, negative 5, moment arm 15, uh, negative 3, moment arm 20, and EY, which has the same moment R, but because it's creating a counterclockwise moment, so it's positive. So I have only one unknown, so I can find EY to be 9.75 kilonewton. So I can plug it in here, 9.75 kilonewton. So I have three unknowns. I can write moment equation about different points to find my unknown. If I write the moment equation about point F, About this point, I get rid of FFG, FFC because they are applying at that point and the only unknown that I would deal with would be FDC. FDC would creating a counterclockwise moment so that would be positive. The moment R would be 3 meter. Then I have my fourth 3 kilonewton. That the moment arm is 5. And I have... Uh, my force uh, 9.75 which is a reaction force the moment arm is the same but it's creating a counterclockwise moment and that would be zero so ftc would be my only unknown that i will find 11.25 kilonewton the value that i'll find for ftc would be negative that means that ftc is actually in compression so ftc would be in compression so I found uh, one value of uh, one unknowns now I can write the moment equation about another point if I choose point C I get 
read of two unknowns. So let me write it here. Summation of moment about point C equals zero counterclockwise to be positive. This the fourth five kilonewton is creating a moment. The fourth three kilonewton, E Y, and uh, both components of uh, F F G is gonna create a moment. So I have one, two, three, and then two components of F G. So I have five components in my moment equation. It's always good to count the components that you you need to have to make sure you're not missing anything. So I have my five kilonewton. The moment arm is five. The three kilonewton. The moment arm is ten. The reaction force. The moment arm is ten. And I have both component, the horizontal component and vertical component of force Fg. Uh, force Fg, the horizontal component is creating a negative moment or a clockwise moment. To find the horizontal component, I need to multiply it by 5 over square root of 9. The moment arm is 3. The vertical component is also creating a negative moment. So 2 over square root of 29 over 5 equals 0. Therefore, F, Fg would be a positive value of 9.15 kN. That means that it is in tension. And here I'm showing you the triangles uh, for each case for FFC and FFG. So we can find the horizontal and vertical component uh, uh, faster and uh, these dimensions are, are given in the in the problem statement so i found i wrote summation of moment about point c and i found ffg so the only force that i need to find would be force uh, ffc so i have multiple options to find ffc i can write a moment equation about point e then i get rid of force FFG and FDC and I will find FFC I can write uh, now that I have all the other forces I can write summation of forces in X summation of forces in Y uh, so I have multiple options let's write summation of forces in Y equals zero therefore force FFC the vertical component would be 3 over square root of 34 uh, FFG would be 2 over square root of 29. I have my 5 kilonewton, 3 kilonewton, and also reaction force 9.75 equals 0. I already found the value for uh, FFFG to be uh, 9.15 uh, uh, here. If I plug it in here, I found it to be here. So I find FFC to be 5.21 kilonewton in tension. That would be actually 3. So because I found a positive value, that means that the direction that I assumed is, is correct. So So I found three of the unknowns. I need the fourth one. And for that one, I need to use method of joint. So I'm gonna write method of joint for four point uh, or for joint G here, and I can find uh, the remaining unknown. So free by diagram of joint G. So for this joint, the only force that I have is force GF, which is in tension. So if it is tension, it's towards the member. So I know the magnitude and I know uh, the force. Then, because it has a component in positive X, then I need to have a force that cancels that component. And that force for me would be FGH, and it has to be in this direction. So FGH could be either in compression or in tension. But to cancel our force, it has to be in tension. And because these two forces are now towards positive Y, then I know my third force, FGC, uh, would be in 
compression and it would go in downward. So let me rename these F G C F G H and F G F that I already found to be nine point fifteen kilonewton. And this is a two five square root of twenty nine. And then here I have two five square root of twenty nine as well so according to symmetry i know if i write summation of forces in x equals zero that means that fgh is equals to fgf to be 9.15 kilonewton so now i can write summation of forces in y remember that method of joints we don't have the option of moment equation we have to use summation of forces in y because these two are equal i just add them together and then I call it 29.15 to find the vertical component 2 over the square root of 29 gives me negative minus force of GC so one equation with one unknown FGC would be 6.8 kilonewton. So for method of joints, we are not looking whether we got a negative value or positive value. Negative and positive in method of joints means that the direction that we assume in our free body diagram is correct or incorrect. The, the compression and tension would be determined whether the force is towards the member or going away from the member. Because our member is here, and this force FGC is going away from the member, therefore this one is in compression. Or you can think of it, our member is here, the force that the member is acting on the, mem on the joint is in this direction, going away from the member, so the reaction that the joint is acting on the member would be in compression. So we use the method of section and method of joints to find uh, all the unknowns.